Life in Coral Bay had always been a peaceful ebb and flow, much like the waves that caressed its shores. I, Robert 48, found solace in the simplicity of my routine as a maintenance worker at the Coral Breeze Resort. The small seaside town was renowned for its pristine beaches and the languid pace of life that attracted tourists from all over. My days were filled with fixing leaky faucets, painting weathered fences, and occasionally pausing to breathe in the salty air that whispered of tranquility. The Coral Breeze Resort was a charming establishment, with whitewashed walls and bright blue shutters that echoed the colors of the sea and sky. It was a place where guests came to unwind, leaving their worries behind as they soaked up the sun and enjoyed the gentle breezes. My role there was humble but satisfying. I took pride in keeping the place in tip-top shape. Whether it was replacing a broken tile by the pool or ensuring that the garden pathways were free of debris, each task was a piece of a larger puzzle that made the resort a haven of relaxation. For twelve years, my wife Emily, 38, and I had shared a quiet existence here. Our home, a modest cottage nestled between palm trees, was our haven. The cottage was painted in soft pastel colors. Its windows framed views of the ocean that seemed to stretch into infinity. Inside, the walls were adorned with photographs of our travels and the shelves were lined with books and seashells we had collected over the years. Emily's laughter had always been the melody that made our house a home. Her presence brought warmth and light into every corner, turning even the simplest moments into cherished memories. Recently, though, the music seemed to falter. Emily had become engrossed in a local book club, a newfound passion that seemed to absorb her every waking moment. She spoke of the club with enthusiasm, recounting discussions about novels and characters with a spark in her eyes that I had not seen in a while. At first, I was happy for her. She had always loved reading, and this seemed like a wonderful way for her to connect with others who shared her passion. However, as weeks turned into months, I began to notice changes that unsettled me. Emily started coming home later and later, her explanations for her tardiness growing increasingly vague. The book club ran long, she'd say, or we decided to grab a coffee after. There was always a plausible reason, yet something about her tone, the way she avoided meeting my eyes, made my heart sink. Our evenings, once filled with shared stories and quiet companionship, turned into solitary nights where I found myself staring at the empty seat beside me, wondering what had changed. I missed the way we used to talk about everything under the sun. Now, it seemed like she was always somewhere else, even when she was home. I could feel the distance growing, and it scared me. I didn't know how to bridge the gap that had formed between us. Our conversations became superficial, centered around mundane topics like grocery lists and bills. The depth that once characterized our exchanges was replaced by a chasm of silence. I found myself reminiscing about the early days of our marriage when we would stay up late, sharing dreams and secrets. The person who sat across from me at the dinner table now seemed like a stranger. One evening, as I sat on our porch watching the sunset, I was struck by a profound sense of loneliness. The beauty of the twilight sky, with its hues of pink and gold, contrasted sharply with the emptiness I felt inside. I realized then that I needed to understand what was happening, to find a way to reconnect with Emily and recapture the closeness we once shared. Little did I know that the journey ahead would be filled with revelations that would test my strength and resolve in ways I had never imagined. It started subtly. Emily would come home later than usual her explanations vague and unconvincing. The book club ran long, she'd say, or we decided to grab a coffee after. Her evasiveness gnawed at me, the seeds of doubt planting themselves deep in my mind. Nights that once were filled with shared stories and quiet companionship turned into solitary evenings, where I found myself staring at the empty seat beside me, wondering what had changed. Emily's behavior became more erratic as the weeks went by. She seemed preoccupied, lost in her own world even when we were together. The book club, which had initially seemed like a harmless pastime, now felt like a wall between us. I would catch glimpses of her texting someone late at night, her phone screen casting a ghostly glow on her face in the darkened room. When I asked her about it, she would dismiss my concerns with a wave of her hand, saying it was just book club discussions or harmless banter with new friends. Her evasiveness only fueled my suspicions, I started to notice other changes, too. She began dressing more meticulously before heading out, 
paying extra attention to her appearance in a way that seemed unnecessary for a simple book club meeting. She would spend hours choosing an outfit, applying makeup, and fixing her hair, leaving me to wonder who she was trying to impress. On weekends, she would disappear for hours, claiming she was running errands or meeting up with book club members. Each time she left, I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. I wanted to believe her, to trust that she was being honest, but the nagging doubts refused to go away. Our once cozy home felt increasingly like a house of secrets. I tried to fill the void by immersing myself in work and hobbies. I took on extra projects at the resort, volunteered for community events, and even tried my hand at cooking elaborate meals to distract myself from the growing emptiness at home. But no matter what I did, the sense of unease lingered. One evening, after a particularly long day at work, I decided to surprise Emily by making her favorite dinner. I hoped that a special meal might bring us closer, give us a chance to reconnect. I spent hours in the kitchen, preparing her favorite dishes with care. The aroma of roasting chicken and freshly baked bread filled the house, a stark contrast to the cold silence that had settled between us. When Emily walked through the door that night, she seemed startled by the sight of the dinner table set with candles and a vase of fresh flowers. What's all this? she asked, a hint of wariness in her voice. I just thought we could have a nice dinner together, I replied, forcing a smile. It's been a while since we had a quiet evening at home. She hesitated for a moment before nodding. That sounds lovely, she said, though her smile didn't quite reach her eyes. As we sat down to eat, I tried to engage her in conversation, asking about her day and the latest book club discussions. She answered politely but with an air of detachment, her mind clearly elsewhere. The meal, which I had hoped would bridge the gap between us, only seemed to highlight the distance. Later that night, as I lay in bed staring at the ceiling, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Emily lay beside me, but she felt a million miles away. I missed her. I missed the way we used to talk about everything under the sun. Now, it seemed like she was always somewhere else, even when she was home. I could feel the distance growing, and it scared me. I didn't know how to bridge the gap that had formed between us. The following days were filled with more of the same. Emily continued to drift further away, and I felt increasingly helpless. Our once vibrant relationship had become a shadow of its former self. I knew I had to do something, but I didn't know where to start. The love that had once been our anchor now seemed fragile, hanging by a thread. The turning point came one evening when Emily received a phone call just as we were sitting down for dinner. She glanced at the screen, her expression shifting from relaxed to tense in an instant. I have to take this, she said, standing up and walking out of the room without another word. I watched her leave, my heart heavy with suspicion. After a few minutes, I quietly followed her to the back porch, where she was speaking in hushed tones. I couldn't make out the words but the urgency in her voice was unmistakable. As I stood there, hidden in the shadows, a cold realization washed over me. Whatever she was hiding, it was more than just a book club meeting. I retreated to the living room, my mind racing. I knew then that I had to uncover the truth, no matter how painful it might be. The thought of losing Emily was unbearable, but living in the dark, plagued by doubts and suspicions, was worse. I needed answers, and I was willing to do whatever it took to get them. Little did I know that the path I was about to embark on would lead to revelations that would change my life forever. The serene facade of our seaside town and the life I had known were about to be shattered, leaving me to pick up the pieces and find a way forward. One evening, in an attempt to reconnect, I decided to surprise Emily by joining her at one of her book club meetings. She had mentioned they were meeting at a quaint little bookstore in the next town. Determined to rekindle the closeness we once shared, I thought my presence might bring a spark back into our relationship. I imagined her surprise turning into a warm smile, and maybe, just maybe, we would find ourselves laughing and talking like we used to. The drive to the bookstore was filled with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. The night air was cool, the sky dotted with stars, and the quiet hum of my car engine was the only sound accompanying my thoughts. As I approached the bookstore, I noticed it was dark and deserted. Confusion washed over me. The sign on the door read, Closed for a private event, but there were no cars in the parking lot. No signs of life. My heart sank. If the book club wasn't meeting here, 
Then where was she? I pulled out my phone and called Emily, trying to keep my voice steady. Hey, I'm at the bookstore. Thought I'd surprise you and join the book club tonight. There was a brief silence on the other end before she responded, her voice tinged with surprise and a hint of something else. Oh, um, the meeting got cancelled last minute. I'm actually on my way home. I forced a chuckle. Ah, uh, that explains it. I guess I'll see you at home then. We hung up, and I sat in my car for a moment, my mind racing. Something didn't add up. If the meeting was cancelled, why hadn't she come straight home? Where had she been all this time? I decided to drive around the town, aimlessly, hoping to clear my head. But the questions kept swirling, refusing to settle. When I got home, Emily was already there, sitting on the couch with a book in her hands. She looked up and smiled as I walked in. Hey, you're back. Did you have a good drive? Yeah, I replied, trying to match her casual tone. Just needed some fresh air. As the days passed, the unease grew stronger. I couldn't shake the feeling that Emily was hiding something from me. I noticed more little things that didn't add up. She was always on her phone, texting someone late at night. When I asked her about it, she would brush it off as book club discussions or harmless banter with friends. Determined to uncover the truth, I decided to follow her the next time she went out. It felt wrong, like a betrayal of the trust we had built over the years, but I couldn't ignore the gnawing suspicion any longer. I needed to know what was going on. The opportunity came a few days later. Emily mentioned she was heading out for another book club meeting. I waited until she left, then grabbed my keys and followed her. Keeping a safe distance, I watched as she drove out of town, my heart pounding with every turn. After about thirty minutes, she pulled into the parking lot of a small cafe in a nearby town. From a distance, I watched as she got out of the car and walked into the cafe. A few minutes later a man joined her. He was tall, with dark hair and a confident stride. They greeted each other with a hug, their familiarity sending a chill down my spine. I couldn't hear their conversation, but their body language spoke volumes. They were comfortable with each other. Too comfortable. I felt a mix of rage and sorrow. The trust I had in her shattering like glass. I stayed in my car, watching as they chatted, laughed, and shared what seemed to be an intimate moment. My worst fears were unfolding before my eyes, and I felt powerless to stop it. After what felt like an eternity, they finally left the cafe. I watched as they got into their cars and drove off, heading in different directions. I waited for a few minutes, trying to gather my thoughts before starting my car and heading home. The drive back was a blur. My mind was filled with images of Emily and the man, their laughter, their closeness. I couldn't believe what I had seen. The woman I had loved and trusted for twelve years was hiding something from me. Something that threatened to destroy everything we had built together. When I got home, Emily was in the kitchen preparing dinner. She greeted me with a smile, but I could barely look at her. My heart was heavy with betrayal, my mind racing with questions. I knew I needed to confront her, to get the truth, but I wasn't sure how. The life we had shared, the dreams we had built, now seemed fragile, hanging by a thread. Little did I know that the path I was about to embark on would lead to even more painful revelations. The serene facade of our seaside town and the life I had known were about to be shattered, leaving me to pick up the pieces and find a way forward. Determined to uncover the truth, I decided to follow Emily the next day when she said she was heading out for a book club meeting again. My heart pounded with a mixture of dread and resolve as I discreetly tailed her car. The late afternoon sun cast long shadows on the road, and I kept a safe distance, hoping she wouldn't notice me. Emily drove out of Coral Bay, taking a winding route that led to a nearby town. I followed her to the small cafe where I had seen her the previous night. This time I parked a bit farther away, finding a spot that offered a good view without being too conspicuous. From my vantage point, I watched as she entered the cafe. Moments later, the same man joined her. They took a seat by the window, and I could see them clearly from where I was. Their conversation seemed animated, filled with smiles and laughter that contrasted sharply with the distance I had felt from Emily at home. My stomach churned with a sickening blend of anger and sorrow as I observed their familiarity. Determined to get closer, I got out of my car and walked towards the cafe. I positioned myself near a cluster of bushes, close enough to hear snippets of their conversation through the open window. They were talking about plans for the weekend, mentioning places they wanted to visit together. 
The casual intimacy of their words hit me like a punch to the gut. The man reached across the table, taking Emily's hand in his. She didn't pull away. Instead, she squeezed his hand and smiled. Just smile I hadn't seen directed at me in months. The reality of their connection was undeniable, and the betrayal felt all the more real. I stayed hidden, watching as they finished their coffee and stood to leave. They walked to their cars, and to my horror, I saw them embrace, their bodies fitting together like pieces of a puzzle. As they pulled away, they shared a kiss, brief but unmistakably intimate. My worst fears were confirmed. Overcome with rage and betrayal, I decided to confront them on the spot. I stormed over, my footsteps heavy with anger. Emily! I shouted, my voice trembling with emotion. What the hell is going on here? Emily and the man turned to me, shock and guilt evident on their faces. The cafe's patrons turned to watch, the quiet afternoon disrupted by my outburst. The man tried to step between us, but I shoved him away, my focus solely on Emily. How could you do this to me? To us, I demanded, my voice breaking. Emily's eyes filled with tears. Robert, I'm so sorry, she stammered, her voice barely a whisper. The man, regaining his balance, stepped forward again. Hey, let's talk about this calmly, he said, trying to defuse the situation. I ignored him, my eyes locked on Emily. Calmly? You think we can talk about this calmly? I spat, my anger boiling over. I pulled out my phone, capturing photos and videos as evidence. Everyone needs to know what you've been doing. The confrontation escalated, with shouting and accusations flying. Emily broke down in tears, and the man looked helpless, unable to placate my fury. People around us whispered and pointed, the scene drawing more attention than I had intended. Finally, unable to bear the tension any longer, I turned and walked away, my heart pounding with a mix of rage and sorrow. I got into my car and drove off, leaving Emily and her lover standing there, surrounded by the chaos of my confrontation. The betrayal had been laid bare, and there was no going back. As I drove home, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions. The trust I had placed in Emily was shattered, and the life we had built together now felt like a lie. The next steps were unclear, but one thing was certain I couldn't continue living in the dark. The truth was out, and I had to face it head on, no matter how painful it might be. The serene facade of our seaside town and the life I had known were irrevocably altered. The journey ahead would be fraught with challenges, but I was determined to find a way forward, to rebuild my life from the fragments of this betrayal. The drive home was a blur, my mind reeling from the confrontation. When I arrived, I sat in the car for a moment, trying to steady my breathing and collect my thoughts. I had to face Emily, and I needed to do it with a clear mind. Stepping out of the car, I felt a surge of determination. This was my home, my life, and I deserved answers. As I walked into the house, I saw Emily sitting on the couch, her face buried in her hands. She looked up when she heard the door, her eyes red and swollen from crying. Robert, she began, but I cut her off. Save it, Emily, I said, my voice cold. I saw everything. I saw you with him. Her face crumpled and she began to sob again. I'm so sorry, Robert. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I felt a pang of sympathy but quickly pushed it aside. Didn't mean for it to happen. You lied to me. You betrayed me. How long has this been going on? She wiped her eyes and took a deep breath. A few months, she admitted. We met at a book club meeting and it just... It just happened. It just happened. I repeated incredulous. You expect me to believe that? You had a choice, Emily. You chose to lie and deceive me. She nodded, tears streaming down her face. I know, and I'm so sorry. I didn't know how to stop it. I felt so distant from you, and I was lonely. I felt a mix of anger and sorrow. You were lonely, and you think I wasn't? Instead of talking to me, you turned to someone else. I know, she whispered. I made a terrible mistake. The silence between us was heavy. I looked around the room, at the photos of us on the walls, the mementos of our life together. It all felt like a cruel joke now. I'm filing for divorce, I said, my voice steady. Her eyes widened in shock. Robert, please, can't we try to work this out? I love you, I never stopped loving you. Love? 
I scoffed. Is that what you call this? You destroyed my trust, Emily. There's nothing left to work out. She stood up, reaching for me, but I stepped back. Please, Robert, she pleaded. I'll do anything to make this right. It's too late, I replied, shaking my head. I can't live like this. I deserve better. With that, I turned and walked out of the room, leaving her sobbing on the couch. I went upstairs to our bedroom, the place that had once been a sanctuary for us, now a painful reminder of her betrayal. I began packing a bag, not sure where I would go, but knowing I couldn't stay there. As I packed, I heard Emily's voice from downstairs, talking on the phone. Mom, I messed up, she cried. I messed up so badly. I felt a pang of guilt but pushed it aside. I had to be strong. This was the end of our marriage, and there was no turning back. After packing my essentials, I grabbed my phone and called a lawyer, setting up an appointment to start the divorce process. I couldn't live in this limbo any longer. I needed to move forward, to reclaim my life and find a way to heal. The days that followed were a whirlwind of legal meetings and emotional turmoil. I gathered evidence of Emily's affair, ensuring I had everything I needed for the divorce proceedings. I exposed her infidelity to our friends and family, the scandal spreading quickly. It was harsh, but I wanted everyone to know the truth. Negotiations for the divorce were tough. Emily begged for forgiveness, for another chance, but I stood firm. I secured the house and a fair share of our assets, leaving her with minimal support. It was a painful process, but I knew it was necessary. Amidst the chaos, I found moments of clarity. I threw myself into self-improvement, enrolling in night classes, and taking up hobbies I had long neglected. Photography became a therapeutic escape, capturing the beauty of Coral Bay and finding solace in the familiar landscapes. Emily struggled to rebuild her life, the fallout from the scandal making it difficult for her. While the pain of her betrayal still lingered, I began to heal. I allowed myself to open up to new relationships, understanding my worth and what I wanted in a partner. The journey wasn't easy, but it taught me resilience and self-love. Looking back, I realized that the end of my marriage was not the end of my story. It was a painful chapter, but it led to a new beginning. I found strength within myself, a determination to move forward and create a life filled with hope and fulfillment. And as I stood on the beach, watching the waves crash against the shore, I knew that I was ready to embrace whatever the future held. The days following the confrontation were filled with a mix of anger, sadness, and a sense of clarity. I had made my decision, and there was no going back. Filing for divorce was the first step in reclaiming my life from the chaos Emily's betrayal had caused. Armed with the evidence I had gathered, I met with a lawyer and started the legal process. Emily's reaction was a whirlwind of emotions. She begged for forgiveness, promising to end the affair and make things right but I knew it was too late. The trust was shattered, and I couldn't imagine a future where I would feel secure and loved in our marriage. Each time she pleaded, my resolve only grew stronger. I exposed Emily's infidelity to our friends and family. It was a harsh move, but I wanted everyone to know the truth. I needed the support of those around me, and I wanted to ensure that Emily couldn't twist the narrative. The scandal spread quickly causing a ripple effect in our small community. Friends and family were shocked, some taking sides, but most offering their support and understanding. Negotiations for the divorce were intense. Emily's lawyer tried to argue for a fair division of assets, but I was relentless. I presented the evidence of her affair, making it clear that her betrayal had led to the breakdown of our marriage. In the end, I secured the house and a fair share of our assets, ensuring that I wouldn't be left with nothing. Emily, on the other hand, was left with minimal financial support, a consequence of her actions. Amidst the legal battles, I focused on healing. I threw myself into work and self-improvement, enrolling in night classes to learn new skills and taking up hobbies I had long neglected. Photography, which had always been a passion, became a therapeutic escape. I spent hours capturing the beauty of Coral Bay, finding solace in the familiar landscapes and the quiet moments of reflection. The support of my friends and family was invaluable. They rallied around me, offering a listening ear and a shoulder to lean on. My best friend Tom was especially supportive. He helped me move my belongings out of the house, 
offering practical advice and emotional support. You're doing the right thing, he would say, his voice steady and reassuring. You deserve better. Emily, meanwhile, struggled to rebuild her life. The fallout from the scandal made it difficult for her to find her footing. She faced judgment and criticism from our community, and the man she had been seeing distanced himself from her. While part of me felt a twinge of sympathy, I couldn't let it sway my resolve. She had made her choices, and now she had to face the consequences. As the months passed, I began to heal. The pain of Emily's betrayal still lingered, but it no longer defined me. I allowed myself to open up to new relationships, understanding my worth and what I wanted in a partner. It was a slow process, but each step forward felt like a victory. I met new people through my night classes and photography outings. One evening, at a local art exhibit, I struck up a conversation with a woman named Claire. She was warm and engaging, her passion for art mirroring my own love for photography. We exchanged numbers, and over time, our friendship blossomed into something more. Claire was different from Emily in every way. She was honest, compassionate, and supportive. She knew about my past, and she respected the pace at which I wanted to move forward. With her, I felt a sense of ease and trust that had been missing for so long. We spent our weekends exploring new places, capturing moments with our cameras, and sharing stories over coffee. Looking back, I realized that the end of my marriage was not the end of my story. It was a painful chapter, but it led to a new beginning. I found strength within myself, a determination to move forward and create a life filled with hope and fulfillment. And as I stood on the beach, watching the waves crash against the shore, I knew that I was ready to embrace whatever the future held. The finalization of the divorce brought a mix of relief and sorrow. It marked the end of a chapter, one filled with love, betrayal, and heartache but it also signaled the beginning of something new. I stood on the steps of the courthouse, the weight of the past slowly lifting from my shoulders. The sun was shining, and the sky was a clear, brilliant blue. It felt like a sign VDJ a promise of brighter days ahead. Life after the divorce was a journey of rediscovery. I continued to focus on self-improvement, dedicating myself to my night classes and photography. Each day was a step forward a chance to rebuild and redefine my life. The support from friends and family never wavered, their encouragement and kindness providing the foundation I needed to move on. Claire became an integral part of my new life. Our relationship grew stronger with each passing day. She was a beacon of light, her presence bringing warmth and joy to the days that had once seemed so dark. We explored the town together, capturing its beauty through our lenses and creating new memories. With Claire, I found a sense of peace and happiness that I hadn't felt in a long time. One weekend, Claire and I decided to take a trip to a nearby island, a place neither of us had visited before. The island was known for its rugged beauty and serene landscapes. It was the perfect escape from the routine, a chance to reconnect with nature and each other. We spent our days hiking through lush forests, exploring hidden coves, and photographing the breathtaking scenery. Each moment was a reminder of how far I had come. From the depths of betrayal to the heights of newfound love and happiness. One evening, as we watched the sunset from a cliff overlooking the ocean, Claire turned to me, her eyes filled with warmth and love. Robert, she said softly, I know we've both been through a lot, but I want you to know how much you mean to me. You've brought so much joy into my life, and I can't imagine a future without you. Her words touched my heart. I reached for her hand, holding it tightly. Claire, You've been my rock, my guiding light through all of this. I feel the same way about you. You've shown me that there's still so much to look forward to, so much to be grateful for. We sat there in silence for a while, the beauty of the sunset reflecting the hope and promise of our future together. It was in that moment that I realized how far I had come. The pain of the past was still there, but it no longer defined me. I was stronger, wiser and ready to embrace whatever life had in store. Returning to Coral Bay, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I continued to immerse myself in my passions, finding fulfillment in the little things. The community that had once been a source of gossip and judgment now became a place of support and camaraderie. I reconnected with old friends, made new ones, 
and found joy in the simple pleasures of daily life. Emily, meanwhile, faced the fallout from her actions. She struggled to rebuild her life, her reputation tarnished by the scandal. While I couldn't find it in myself to forgive her completely, I hoped she would find her own path to healing and growth. We had shared twelve years together, and despite the pain, I wished her no ill will. One evening, as I was organizing my photos from the island trip, I came across a picture of Claire and me standing on the cliff, the sunset painting the sky behind us. I printed the photo and placed it in a frame on my desk. It was a symbol of my journey, a reminder of the strength and resilience that had brought me to this point. As the seasons changed, so did my outlook on life. The scars of the past were still there, but they were a testament to my survival and growth. I found myself looking forward to each new day, each new opportunity to create and share moments of joy and love. The journey of recovery and growth had taught me invaluable lessons about resilience, self-love, and the importance of surrounding myself with positive, supportive people. With Claire by my side and a strong network of friends and family, I knew I could face any challenge that came my way. As I stood on the beach one morning, watching the waves crash against the shore, I felt a deep sense of peace. The sea, with its endless ebb and flow, mirrored my own journey, VJ a cycle of loss and renewal, of pain and healing. I was ready to embrace the future, to build a life filled with hope, love, and fulfillment. Looking back, I realized that the end of my marriage was not the end of my story. It was a painful chapter, but it led to a new beginning, one where I found strength, love, and a renewed sense of purpose. And as I watched the sunrise over Coral Bay, I knew that I was ready to face whatever the future held, with hope and optimism guiding my way.